All right, so this is where we left off from the panorama workflow. And you can see it's kind of weird now because I, I, I don't see my photos. Well, we you can see here there's a little cross. If you click on it, you go back to the regular, what we call the strip. And by the way, there's different ways. I didn't show that to you, but there's different ways of presenting your photo. I kind of like the strip version where the photo is in full screen, you get a little bit of a strip. And you can see here it says 8. If you press 8, you come to this menu. And I actually really like that. It's different in Lightroom Classic. I can see here is the original uh, uh, panorama, and that's the first stitching. This was the, the first, the second correction. This was the first correction. Anyway, to go back to where we were, here we are. Now I'm going to show you how to do an HDR. Uh, it's kind of very similar. So uh, I'm going to take an HDR, like uh, for example, this one. So this is a, a normal exposure, this is an underexposure, and this is an overexposure of the same thing here in New York. So I'm going to select all three, and I'm going to right-click, Photo Merge, and I'm going to take the option called HDR. So HDR is kind of cool when you have a lot of dynamic range, meaning there's a lot of, you know, very bright information and very dark information, and sometimes the camera is not strong enough to capture everything. Okay, the option in HDR is very straightforward. you got auto-align, which make sure it's always on. Auto settings, I never use, so I'm going to turn it off. And then you've got the deghosting hammout. Now, deghosting is basically if you've got like little tree, uh, like for example, here's some trees. And when there is, you see, because you're taking three photos, if the leaf moved a little bit between the three photos, Lightroom can see that they don't align properly. So I can go here and add some deghosting amount, like all the way high, for example. And I can click here on Show Deghosting Overlay. So what the software is going to do is going to basically look for differences between the three photos if something moved. And if yes, it's going to show it to you in red. So it's creating a preview. It's a lot of you know a lot of work. And boom. So it's saying here that you know I'm going to click here. It's saying here in red uh, that something changed here. Oops, sorry. Yeah. But in this case, I'm not I'm not going to use a deghosting option because uh, you know if there was a lot of trees, I would use it, but that's not the case. So I'm just going to click on merge, and basically what merge is going to do is create some kind of like super HDR, super uh, you know it's kind of like a super file kind of thing, and um, and basically that you can work with. So here it is. Uh, so if you click here on four, you can see you get the um, you know, that's the normal exposure, the under, that's the over. And the one that has this little symbol is the HDR one. That's the one you work, you want to work on. That's the, because this one just going to have more information. So let's go back here and same thing. Open up shadows, uh, bring down the highlights, do the white point, do, do the white point, do the black point. Okay, now when it comes to sh highlights and uh, night light photos, Sometimes I like to not go all the way minus 100. I, I like to go like minus 50. Usually when uh, when it's night photography, I kind of like that. Now the white balance is really weird. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, when you use the middle, middle mouse or I don't know, something's happening with my mouse. It jumps off a, a photo. And that's probably going to happen for you too. So the white balance is really bad. So, so this is interesting. If you go to daylight, it's kind of okay. Uh, if I go to cloudy, it's really red. And if I go to shade, it's really red. Now, if I go to tungsten, it's really blue. And if I go to fluorescent, it's kind of in the middle. So I like to take fluorescent as a starting point and just add back some yellow and maybe a little bit of magenta. Actually, you know what? Let's just go back to fluorescent and maybe just add a little. No, it's fine. Let's go with fluorescent. Maybe just a tad of yellow, just a little bit. Yeah. And then I can make the photo brighter if I want to. I kind of like that or, you know, I don't know. I think it's time to use some of the local tools. Yeah, I think I want to make the whole photo brighter. And I just want to make the, some of the top of the sky darker. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to double click here, double click there, click and drag. And I'm going to make uh, the exposure a bit darker here and the exposure maybe a bit darker there. So before you use this tool, you have to decide if you want to stay on this cropping. In, in my case, I don't actually want to go 16 by 9 because I'm addicted to 16 by 9. And uh, yeah, I think I want to have... So yeah, I want to be closer to the city and by basically using that crop, taking out some of that sky, which is kind of boring here, it's more interesting. I'm kind of good. And I'm getting closer to Manhattan, which is what I want. Okay, so back onto the gradient. Uh, the gradient, maybe I'm going to lower it a little bit. Here, I'm going to make it maybe a little bit stronger. Make the top of the photo a little darker. And I really want to make the city shine. So let's go and take a circle 
and let's make the CD shine. So on that circle, I can add a bit of yellow, I can add a bit of exposure, I can add a bit of texture, and I can add a bit of clarity and a bit of saturation. All of that in one circle. It's kind of crazy to think that, you know, all of that in one circle. And again, backslash key uh, before, after with a circle. Uh, you, let's go here to really appreciate it before, after. 